And we're recording. Hello, everyone. It is May 4th, 2011. My name is Dan Bull. I'm sitting in my office in North Hollywood, California, which is the world headquarters of uh, 65 Amps in North Hollywood. And uh, today I have our old friend, the Stone Pony, on deck. A lot of guys asked for the pony, and I just haven't had one around to play. So today we get the pony, and uh, the pony is a little different than most amps, actually. Um, it's uh, I use your Dan Bull pick all the time. That's hilarious. Old Strat, what up? Hey, um, so the Stone Pony runs on 7591s, which is still a current production tube. It's very popular with hi-fis. Um, but basically uh, overlooked by the guitar world, except for one company. Um, I get the hiccups. I apologize. Oh my goodness. Ampeg. Ampeg. Uh, Ampeg used 7591s quite a bit in the late 60s and early 70s, and um, it's a really fun tube. It's got a different sound. I hope it comes across on the recording today. Just so you guys know, too, I'm going to start recording these broadcasts in tandem on Pro Tools. Um, so the I'll put up the Ustream archive, but I'm also going to put up cleaned up ones. Uh, do it on Pro Tools and with a high def video camera. I don't know if you guys saw the link I posted last night. Um, the PreSonus guys, a little behind the scenes of what it's like sitting here doing my broadcast. And when those guys brought the PreSonus mixer in, they did that video. It's pretty fun. But it made me realize, you know, I need a better camera because the webcam's pretty poo-poo. It's okay for the broadcast, but for the archived ones, I think you guys would probably appreciate a better picture and better sound. So we're going to start. Um, I have my copy of Pro Tools 9 here on my desk. I'm going to try to get it up and running this week. And uh, thanks to the guys at Avid for giving me a very nice industry price on that. And uh, anyway, that's what's going on. So anyway, back to the Stone Pony. So Ampeg, at the time, when they were using 7591s, were based out of Linden, New Jersey. And we were trying to think of, what's the coolest place in New Jersey? And it's the Stone Pony, where Springsteen started, Southside Johnny, Bon Jovi, all those guys. Coolest club in New Jersey. So there you have it, the Stone Pony. It's our sort of tip of the hat to those folks over there. And since uh, Bruce Springsteen and Richie Sambora are customers of 65, we're, we're proud to have a little New Jersey connection with those guys. Um, Bruce Springsteen has um, recorded his last three albums on 65s with Brendan O'Brien. And Richie Sambora uses a couple amps we made for him for television stuff and for recording. And they're both just the nicest people in the world. Some of my favorite customers. Not that I'm like buddies with these guys or anything, but my interactions with them have just been fantastic. So. How's that coming across out there, guys? The pony. The pony's fun. Well, I have to put my... Uh, Headphones on here, because I, I can hear my headphones are sitting right here. And I have them just kind of pointed at me. So let me get my mic down here. This is what I hear. That's it. That's all. I hear a little rumble through the wall, and my headphones are like my little desk monitors. So it's kind of like crazy. What's the waiting on the pony? I don't remember, to be honest with you. It's high 20s, like 27, 28 watts. You know, 28 watts from 65 amps, though, is a little strong. Right now, I have the amp on five and a half. <clears throat> the bump is off, and I have the bump on five. Master voltage is almost all the way up. It's on nine. Mid-range content and a different top end. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Flannery is asking, what does the 7591 give you that other tubes don't? That's exactly where I was going. Good question, Jim. Um, 7591 is a <coughs> interesting tube because it's very full range, but it also distorts easy. Um, so you get this sort of nice... <laughs> sort of robust full range thing. Very nice, delicate tube, you know, lots of sparkle to it. Kind of very thick mid-range that's not British, you know, it's a it's a different notch. It's a lower mid thing. That's right, Steve. You're getting it. Yeah. So this pony's fine for a couple reasons like that. It's great in a mix because it'll notch in with Marshalls and Fenders and not step on them or Voxes. And same on stage. You can play this amp and it doesn't have to be that loud. And you hear it because the mid range notch is different. <laughs> But then once you push it kind of hard, it's a totally different animal. Like it breaks up, it gives up really quick. The tube tends to distort really fast. You get it. So you know, it's sort of classic, you know. play the lick right what's the best part you know that was uh that was all done on 7591s those records um uh the exile on main street records those are 7591s you know, all that sort of, uh, was it me? You kind of recognize that bubbly low end. idea you know it's a different kind of tube I just blow the G string again it's just lively it's a very lively tube jumpy you know it kind of feels like a hot EL34 under finger but yeah there's a little bit of a cross between a 6v6 and a 6l6 but it's just got its own thing that I really like Recognize that sound, right? <clears throat> That's 7591s, man. All that stuff. I'm put my headphones on. I have no idea what this is sounding like out there, if I'm playing sloppy or not. You tell me. Got a good beat and you can dance to it? 
Headphone Dan, there we go. So you can kind of hear. You got bumped, Martin. Oh, it's about 27, 28 watts, somewhere around there. So it's definitely an American voice, you know, it doesn't sound like a Marshall or a Vox. But that clean does not sound like a Fender either. See so all that same licks with the bump on. coming across well. It sounds a little thin in my headphones, which this amp is not thin. It's got a big footprint. You gotta do Freddie King in middle position, right? I can't play it right, but. <laughs> You'll forgive me, I'm not good at Freddie King. And bridge pickup. <laughs> stuck in my head again. Um, Ward Hake, if you're watching from Fox, <clears throat> Ward brought me over a CD with the remastered, the new remastered band on the run. Because I guess Fox is licensing some McCartney stuff. And I, I can't stop thinking. <laughs> Yes, Frank, good question. The Pony does have the master voltage, and I've got it on about nine right now, uh, just because I like to save tubes. But, um, Jim Flannery says, is that a bright Les Paul? It's a little brighter than average. It's not super bright. Um, it's a little brighter than average, I think. It's a lightweight one. You know, It's one of those newer bodies that's chambered, which makes it brighter. And I have Tone Pro's bridge on it and stuff. <laughs> Can't stop thinking about it. It's a great lick, right? One of the other great guitar riffs off that record. <laughs> had my foot switch, I would have went to clean. But you know, McCartney's guys don't mess up the licks like I do. Then Lizzie. this into really heavy distortion it sounds great now you sing Frank tonight there's gonna be there you go 
So, let's see. Is it coming across bright out there to you, Frank? So I can turn the treble down. I just have the bump troll like that. <laughs> Oh, good. Smog Falls, you're listening to real monitors. That's the key. If you're listening on computer speakers, it's just a wild guess on how close you are. Um, you really need to have some good monitors. I have Atom A3Xs here, which are pretty good. They're little. You know, it's like a four-inch driver, but they sound good. <laughs> I listened to today on the radio. I was playing it earlier. Right when I was driving in, it was... ACDC is my guilty pleasure. I never get tired of those ricks. McCarthy's asking, are the 7591s what the old Supros use? There might have been some Supros um, that did. I'm not aware of them. Uh, the only amps I know that really, I think a few other people used them, but the only people I know that really used them heavily were Ampeg, you know, like the blue Tolex era Ampegs. Old Strat is asking, did I miss what kind of speaker setup? This is just my standard 212. Um, with a G12H30 and an Alnico Blue, the same one I use every week. And um, same miking rig, same outboard gear. If you want me to go over that again, I can. It's a Royer 121 on the, on the uh, G12H30. Sorry, I'm a little spacey today. And um, hey, Justin Magana's here. Justin, what's up, dude? Yeah, Magnetone might have used them too. I just don't know a lot of those kind of B-brand amps I'm not a real expert on. Um, I grew up in Missouri where there wasn't a lot of those off-brand things happening. Um, and I'm sort of a snob, jerk, loser. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I just don't know. I'm a little ignorant. We could probably look it up. Somebody wants to go Google, Google, Google. Um, B-brand. Well, I mean, I had silver tones and stuff, but I didn't see a lot of Valco and Supro where I grew up, or Magnetones. Um, unfortunately, where I grew up, I saw a lot of PV. Uh, so you want to talk about some PV gear now? Come on. I can hook you up. Uh, that's a joke. I'm just kidding. I did see a lot of PV, though. That's Stores all sold new PV gear. And uh, some Fender. Lots of Fender gear. But I didn't see a real Marshall for a while when I was a kid. I was playing guitar for a couple of years before I saw a real Marshall. And if you look on our website, it says, do you remember the first time you ever plugged into one of those great old British amps? That's me at Music Village in Columbia, Missouri, 
on a rainy Thursday plugging into my first Marshall, and I bought it, or at least figured out how I could buy it, because I was in eighth grade. And I went home to my dad, and I said, Dad, just tell me, what do I got to do? It's 900 bucks. <laughs> It was like 1977 or 1978. It's $900. And he went, ah, what? Yeah. And uh, he, we put it on layaway, and then I bought it. And uh, I was in love, in love with that Marshall, but I didn't see a lot of them growing up in Missouri. Bands came through playing them, but <clears throat> they weren't in stores. And neither was Vox. I never saw Vox stuff. I had to go to Kansas City or St. Louis to see a box, and even then there wasn't that many around. No, I do not have that Marshall Smog Falls. That's a great question. It was a 212 50 watt combo. And I remember just plugging into it and just going. Went, oh my God. I mean, I literally just was stunned. It just punched me in the face. I think I was 12 years old or 13 years old. And I knew how to play stuff like, you know. It's not dirty enough, is it? Get this thing a little dirty. Gotta get that howl. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, 50 watt, uh, JMP 50 watt combo. That's what I had. So Joe Riggio, you had the same thing. Uh, ah, Smog Falls could be the same amp I have sitting right here next to me. Could be. Mine was not a 78. It was a 75, I think. I don't really know. But yeah, 212 50 watt combo with greenbacks in it. Um, it sounded good. Steve Kirk says uh, his first tube amp was an Ampeg VT22. Holy cow, man. How'd you survive that? Yeah, I got an Ampeg V4 um, after I got that first Marshall. And uh, boy, that Ampeg V4 ripped my eyebrows off. Yeah, yeah, you stream censured you, Steve. But yes, it was loud. Those are loud amps. VT22 is a monster. And Duke, his first amp was a 75 high watt DR50. Oh, man, that's nice. I like that. I like that a lot. That's a good one. Um, still have it. Wow, I'm jealous. He had a V2. Jim Flannery had a B2. A V2. Yeah, V2 is good. V2 is kind of similar to this. The VT uses, uh, V2 uses, what, 7089s or something like that? <clears throat> uh, yeah, great clean sounds, the whole bit. It's very fun. Um, so anyway, what do you guys want me to do with a pony? I, I've got strats, and i got my Esquire here. I meant to bring in my Jerry Jones today. Um, I forgot. Jerry Jones sounds good. You want to hear a telly? Okay, I'll, I'll play my Esquire, uh, my... The Temple Telly's out in the shop. So if somebody wants to bring in the De Temple, that'd be great. If not, let me get this Esquire on here really quick. Hang on a sec. Do it down. All right. My little Esquarito. Let me tune her up really quick. Um this tally's pretty sharp, and this is a pretty aggressive Esquire, but you get the idea. Oh, it's out of tune. You know what happens to these guitars? It's so a time of year in LA where the weather's changing crazy. Today it's like 93 degrees outside. Or two days ago it was 73. So these guitars are going crazy. We have the alternating desert winds coming in, drying everything out. Uh, 
and then the ocean breeze comes in, cools it off and moistens it up. So the guitars go through a little bit of an adjustment. Oh, the De Temple, right on. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, sir. Watch the cables. Yeah. Rick Benson, everybody. Sorry. I just don't want to plug this in if it's not holding a tune yet. For those of you that live in the Southwest, you know this drill. Guitars <clears throat> they have to sort of get adjusted. Okay, Esquire. Esquire, don't mind. Frank McCarthy's got a 72 PV. 46L6 is right on. You play steel guitar through that? All right, let's spank. <laughs> Top end, right? We can even cool it off a little bit, get super clean. Puerto Rico. Hey, Charles. Que pasa? Nada mucho, amigo. Como estas? I'm just playing a little stone pony action. <clears throat> I don't know how much you missed, but... <laughs> McCarthy's asking, any country artists using the pony? Not any touring guys. Uh, there's a lot of studio guys in Nashville that use it, though. It, this amp gets recorded in Nashville probably a few times a week. Uh, most notably, uh, Jade Hughes and Pat Buchanan. And there's a couple other guys I can't remember now, but Pat Buchanan plays with everybody. I mean, he had that billboard downtown, you know, the CMA Guitar Player of the Year. Uh, he had that billboard in downtown Nashville because <clears throat> he plays on everyone's records, most notably like, you know, Faith Hill and Kenny Chesney, and he's out right now with Amy Grant, um, that sort of thing. Uh, guys should know that you are like Drew Shirley from Switchfoot has one. Um, John Shanks has one that he records with. Um, seems to be really popular in the studio. And then there's a lot of local bands using them. Um, but uh, it's not one that I have, you know, my big giant stars on. <laughs> Tartan Special apparently has one. Bedtime Stories Told, Kids Asleep. Log on to see you playing my amp. Right on, Tartan Special. <laughs> Sound like Garth and Wayne there. Right on, dude. Totally. Um... <laughs>
plug the temple telly in too, because it sounds a lot different than this. This is a pretty aggressive, spanky <clears throat> Nashville kind of thing. <clears throat> this is a little more about Keith Richards kind of thing, which I'm sure needs to be tuned up too. Sorry about all the tuning. My guitar tech is heck taking the day off. Excuse me, and I burp on the broadcast. You know, you guys paid extra for that, right? For gas. Yeah? No? Anybody there? Check, check. Is this thing on? Okay. Dan's going into bad jokes. Someone get him a shot. All right. Oh, that's not horrible. This one went sharp. The other one went flat. <laughs> so this guitar is made by Michael the Temple here in Van Nuys, California. And if you're not familiar with the temples, you should be. Um, the guy's kind of redefined, in my mind, what a Telecaster is. Uh, we're close enough. Okay, the Temple Telly. Sweet, sweet, sweet guitar. But this has a neck pickup, so I can give you a little different. Yeah, uh, W. Lawrence Stevens. Is that my friend Steve in Century City? I know who you are. I'm really glad you're here. This is a lot mellower guitar than that Esquire, and uh, but you can also do what we were doing earlier. That's with a bump off. I can really heat that up. Let's do it with a bump on. So for all you Southern California guys, you're probably all trying to keep your guitars in tune today because we have this hot wind blowing out of the desert. It's making all of our guitars go creaky. Bump off. question. Bass Face Josh <clears throat> is asking, what frequency range does the bump boost? And so it's mid-range. <clears throat> what it does is just let more information, more music go to the tubes. So they distort because they got more work to do. You know?
Big old Telecaster, nice piece of swamp ash and handmade parts and blah 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 blah. <laughs> This guitar has been in the case for about a month, so. Lots of single coil noise there, sorry. I can't hear, I hope you can. Middle position. Um, Josh is asking, is that a lipstick pickup in the neck? No, it's just a regular telly pickup with mm, lots of single coil noise, as you can hear. <laughs> W. Lawrence Stevens owns a couple of 65 amps. And you have, Steve, you have a Monterey, right? Which is sort of the sister or brother amp to this one. You know, the Stone Pony and the Monterey are very similar, except for the tubes. This one we're exploiting the 7591. Go back to a little clean. I think this amp's wonderfully chiming and got a really neat character to it. meander through chords. <coughs> Broadcasting on the web. I hope this is coming out well for you guys. first to name the song. There's your key. All right, guys. Well, we're about 45 minutes here. Getting pretty good on the pony. Is there any questions you want me to answer? Anything you want to go through? I'm really glad to see a lot of you guys here. W. Lawrence Stevens especially. I was kind of always hoping you show up to these things. I'm glad you're here. I miss talking to you. Uh, all the Ricks. Uh, Goofy65. Yeah, Peter did an excellent presentation of Stone Pony on YouTube. Yeah, that was, um, was that a NAM video? We were in our NAM booth when he did that. Yeah, if Peter plays, it's a lot more interesting than me. I only tend to play guitar well if I'm in a band. If I'm sitting here playing, I just noodle, and I apologize. Yeah, that's a good video, and it's on our YouTube channel. I think it might even be on the website. I'm not sure. Does the Spone Pony have an EQ? Uh, you don't have to say that. Oh, that doesn't hurt my feeling. Peter's a lot better guitar player than I am and a lot more interesting. Does the Spone Pony have an EQ? When the bump is off, you have a bass and treble EQ. Sort of a typical American tone stack. And then when the bump is on, you have the bump level control, and then you have the bump tone. It just has a tone knob. So you kind of have two different EQs, depending on how you're running the amp. It's not two channels. It's the same channel. We're just changing the structure of the channel. Sort of backwards from most amp companies. will make you two channels with two different tubes and blah, 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 blah. And it's a lot of redundant stuff, you know. <laughs> Still 
love that tune. All right, guys, what do you think? What can I do for? I know last week we had a lot of guys that wanted to talk about tubes and want me to get into tube spec and tube production. Do you guys want to? We haven't even gone very technical today, so it seems like we're more of a having fun at lunch playing guitar crowd, which is great because I am uh, pretty low energy today, so this is fun just playing guitar and chatting. I like it. Um, no problem, though. Anything on your mind? Uh, I guess we're all happy about Bin Laden getting shot. <laughs> We can talk about that. Uh, for those of you that know me, I got married September 8th, 2001. So Bin Laden screwed my honeymoon. And so I was, uh, I was uh, hoping I'd get a shot at him myself, but I missed it. Uh, Frank McCarthy is asking Transformers. Yes, Frank, what, what do you want to know about Transformers? Seriously, I would have loved to have had a shot at Bin Laden. Osama bin dying. Hey, Tony Daniel. Oh my God, you're here. Dude, where you been? Miss you. Hey, this is good. We had some good friends on here today. Osama bin hiding. Osama bin dying. Osama bin wasting my time. Uh, w. Lawrence Stevens is asking, uh, what's the status of US2 production? Anything cool happening in the last two years? I've been out of touch. Well, Steve, um, nothing really. Uh, there's, uh, there's a couple people I know of that are talking about, you know, doing some US2 production, and you, you know, I've talked about that before. Um, but I'm not aware of anything going on. Um, I know that the Chinese are actually getting better. I, I, I played a special run of rubies a couple of months ago. Uh, power tubes, EL34s that actually sound pretty good. I was surprised. I'm not a big fan um, of Chinese tubes as a general rule. Um, they're fine. I just they don't seem like they're quite there yet. Um, but nothing. I wish I had a good story to tell you there, Steve, because there's not there's not much. <clears throat> but. Um, and let's see, Frank McCarthy is asking, what's the difference between that and what's in the Tupelo? Oh, good question. Well, the transformers that are in the Stone Pony are much larger and much higher voltage and much different design than what's in the Tupelo. Um, you're watching on the train in Boston. That's great. Um, uh, the, the transformers in here are very modern transformers. Um, they're very, uh, without giving away secrets, they're a very modern design, you know, past 15 years. Um, and, but, you know, they're similar steel. It's all a silicon-free M6 kind of thing. Um, the Transformers in the Tupelo are very vintage-inspired. Um, and the, the output transformer on the Tupelo is not even an American transformer. It's a British design that we um, adapted to 6v6s and then, but the power transformer, I'm gonna put my feet up on the desk since we're all friends here and I'm tired today. Um, uh, that, uh, yeah, the, uh, the power transformer on the Tupelo is a really old, old design that's sort of wonky, but it's great. It makes that amp thump. Um, let's see, next question. Ever play with those yellow jacket things? Yeah, I did. I wasn't real blown away, to be honest with you. Um, they're functional. They work. Um, I wouldn't say the tone was to my liking. But you know what? If you got a gig and you need to cut the power of your amp down, that's a great way to do it. It works fine. Um, Tartan Special is asking or saying the thing that I notice about my pony is that it sits amazingly well in our mix, both live and recorded. Singer plays Gretsch through EL84s, best blend we've ever had. Well, that's really kind of, yeah, that's kind of the way I feel about this amp too. Is that um, it mixes really well because it's got its own voice. So especially if you have a heavy guitar band. Um, if you have two marshals on stage, it's just louder than hell. You know, it's hard to tell one from the other. And um, with the pony, it tends to notch in a little better. Um, so, yeah, that seems to work really well. Uh, Doug Guillaume is asking, 
You never did get into the specs for current production tubes. Yeah, well, what I was going to talk about in spec is, you know, spec is sort of an arbitrary number that was put out by tube companies 50 years ago. And most modern tubes don't meet it. Um, you know, so if you design, you have an amp that's 500 volts B plus, and you want to run a KT88 in it, and you look on the KT88 spreadsheet, and it says it takes 700 volts, uh, chances are it's not going to come close to that. And preamp tubes especially, they're just wild. They're all over the place. Um, I had a conversation with Derek Underdown when we were working on this box book. Um, and he, Derek Underdown was the head engineer at Mullard. And he told me that when um, they would get tubes in from Mullard, they used to get really, really pissed off because sometimes up to 5% of them were out of spec. <laughs> if I had 5% of my tubes that were at spec, I'd have a party. Um, we have to go through so many tubes to get correctly spec tubes and then to make sure they work. You know, we, sometimes we get stuff at spec and then it just blows up. We put it on our burn rack for a day, and then they don't survive. Or they're at spec when you put them in, then once they break in, they're down 20%. You know, 20% should be a year or two of use, of hard use, and it'll happen overnight with modern tubes sometimes. So there are a few manufacturers that are a little more consistent than others. I can't really say names, but the Eastern European tubes um, are a little more consistent than other stuff. Um, Doug, is there something particular you wanted to know about a certain tube? I'd be happy to tell you what I know. And Miles Rose is in the building, too, probably listening. And he can jump in here on the chat. And, and uh, anyway, OK, Doug, well, the, the, the basic thing is that modern tubes are uh, highly unreliable, <laughs> basically. Uh, I'm trying to be diplomatic here. I don't want to be too rude about it. but. Um, they're nowhere near the consistency and the quality that they were 30, 40, 50 years ago. Because uh, they're all made on old machinery. And it's just naturally degrading. Um, so uh, you got to be real careful. Like, for example, if you have a 65, not 65 amps, but a 1964, 65 Blackface Fender Deluxe, let's say, and it runs on 6V6s, um, some of those can be as high as 440, 450 volts on the plate. And there's only one modern 6v6 that can do that. And that's the JJ. Uh, if you go with any other 6v6 made, chance are you going to melt that tube. Whereas back then, any 6v6 could handle it. No problem. 440 volts was not a big deal. So, um, so anyway. <laughs> So Martinizer is asking, what amp would you suggest, bonk, what amp would you suggest for an acoustic electric guitar player for a good, clean, warm sound? One of, you mean like one of my amps, one of the 65s? say the probably the most how much power do you need yeah steve kirk took the words right out of my mouth i'd say the apollo bass amp or uh, a monterey like what jared sharf plays on saturday night live does really good clean how's about my leg in the shot Any thoughts on 12AU7s? Um, yeah. They're good. Um, sexy. Thanks, Doug. That's very generous of you. Um, and, uh, you know, they're OK. I sort of like the gain and the, the reaction time of a 12AX7 better. You know, you can adjust the gain on all your tubes. We have a thing on the amp called the volume control. And that's all that's doing is gaining that tube up and down by charging up the control grid. Um, uh, so, you know, 12X7s are fine if you like the sound of them, or 12AU7s, excuse me. Uh, they're good. It's just personal opinion. Um, 
why isn't there a tube brand that is retooling and making really good tubes? Great question, Martin. You get the gold star for the day. Because people get rich selling trash. That is why. There's no reason for them to. They get usuriously wealthy selling us really second-rate tubes. And um, they're acceptable tubes. They're just not great. And the tube market's kind of small. So, and most of the guys that run tube companies are, you know, over 60 years old. So why are they going to spend $5 million to retool? And, you know, it's a shame. I personally think if anybody went to make good tubes right now, they'd become the richest people in the MI business. So I think a lot of people have gone away from tube hi-fis, especially because there's no good tubes around. It's too expensive. Why was guitar staying tuned? I know you Southern California guys are doing this. Can you name drop any tunes, recorded tunes that you feel best represent your amps? Oh my gosh, that's a tough question. Um, uh, well, let's see. Anything Brendan O'Brien's done in the past three years? There's 6v6, or 6v6s. Boy, am I tired. There are 65 amps on those. Um, if you guys like Wolf Mother, <laughs> Wolf Mother was recorded. Jerry Finn, the one he produced, was a London. Wolf Mother sounded killer to a London. Um, Brendan O'Brien records everybody, man. Um, yeah, the last few Springsteen records sound fantastic on the London. Uh, the latest Lucinda Williams record album is all 65s all over it. I think it sounds great because you had Elvis Costello playing on it. You had Val McCallum playing on it. You had Matthew Sweet playing on it, Greg Lease, and Mark Goldenberg, and they all used 65s on that record. The producer had me bring over a whole pile of them because Elvis Costello came in and said, I got to have a 65 to do his bid on the record. Um, Sugarland, you want to go in the country world? Sugarland and Lady Antebellum. Um, that's all 65 stuff. And you know, those are two of the biggest selling acts in the music business right now. Um, Peter Stroud tracks. Yeah, Peter's, gosh, everything Peter's done in the past few years has been on 65s. He's got a bunch of good vintage stuff too. Uh, let me think. Uh, you know, I, I don't chase it like that you know it's kind of I should be more nerdy about it I know some embarrassing ones I can tell you about Frank McCarthy says, which Wolf Mother tunes? Um, the record that Jerry Finn produced about three years ago. That's, there's 65s all over that. <clears throat> uh, he was using multiple amps, but you hear the London all over it. Um, I like Wolf Mother. I thought they were fun. Um, let's see. What else? Jeez. There's a lot of stuff. Okay, so the embarrassing one. There was a tune that the Jonas Brothers did with Miley Cyrus. And I heard the demo tracks. Matter of fact, the tracks are on our website. And uh, you just hear the guitar parts, and that's it. You don't know what it is. And I'd heard it a thousand times because it's on my website. Greg Wells produced it. And Greg Wells is one of the best producers in the world. He's at the top of the game right now. The guy is at the apex of our business. And um, But he, you know, he, he'll... He started where everyone else does, you know, producing things for money. <clears throat> and Greg, you know, Katy Perry, One Republic, he's working on the new All-American Rejects record. He's just an astonishing musician, great player, whatever. And I heard these tracks on our website over and over again, and then I'm watching Hannah Montana with my daughters. I have a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. And this track comes on, I'm like, hey, wait a minute, I know that song. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
And that was both channels of a London in stereo. I think it's on our website still. From Greg Wells. Taking Greg Wells and Empire this week, too. Which 65 amp would you say has the most aggressive mids? Well, that's a good question. I mean, the Stone Pony would be one of them. I think there's a few that kind of are equal. For a Vox kind of mid, you know? The L84s with compression on it, I'd say the London Pro. Uh, definitely, because you can combine those two channels and really gain it up. Uh, for a Marshall kind of sound, then the Empire. Definitely the most mids, especially when you're on channel two and channel three. Very mid-rangey. Um, no empires up here. I know, Joe, we've talked about this. Gosh darn it. We, you know, call, uh, call uh, Jay over at Emerald City again and bug him. Because I keep trying to get him to stock one. And it's one of those stores where, you know, they do mostly vintage gear. Is it, what's the best store in Seattle to put them in? couple other dealers in Washington that do really well. Yeah, I know. I know. It's historic. Like Moses Lake Music, I think it's only a couple hours outside of Seattle. What is Bug Jay again? Say, look, dude, this is crazy. Static Rick, why no dealers in Ohio? I don't know. There's certain areas in the country where we just, you know, can't get the dealers on. Um, I'd love to have dealers in Ohio. Do you have some recommendations? You can email them to me uh, or email them to Rick Benson, who is just rick at 65amps.com or Dan at 65amps. Uh, Mark Morgan said he was going to. I don't know Mark Morgan. But hey, if he wants to sell 65s, he can do it. Maybe he works with one of my other associates. I just don't know him. Did you guys just see a flash? Was that a reflection? It's probably feeling like what Osama felt a few nights ago. As we wind down to s s slow music. Sure, Joe, what's your shop? Want some strat through here, too? I can do that. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm very low energy today, and this is a boring one. But it's good chat. Like, everybody's involved. I dig that. Everybody's paying attention and all these sorts of things. Um... Uh, well, yeah, what, it, oh, here, Joe, it doesn't let me put, uh, URLs, let me turn, why is this doing this, okay, here, Joe, where is your shop, Joe, is it in Seattle? Ooh, man, these guitars are all bad. The weather's been changing so much. In Tacoma, well, yeah, you're right there, aren't you? You got a storefront? Come on, little tuner. Oh, this is going to be fun. 
It's literally went from like a few days ago, the high was 72, 73 here, and the high today is going to be 93. So the barometric pressure has changed dramatically. The humidity's dropped to nothing, which is good for those of you with allergies. But the guitars are all very unhappy. And I should have done this before the show. I apologize. Pretty close. Let's see how she do. Let's see how she do, Mr. Stratocaston. All right. Uh, asking about my green strat. I guess it's a surf green, I think. I have a lot of bright lights on here, so it tends to make colors look weird. And this one's white. If that makes... The other one in the rack is green. like 69 on the screen does and it's 65 with an exclamation point. on a strat. You recognize the lick. Brontosaurus, yay! All right, old strat, gold star, gold star. And who is the band that played Brontosaurus? This is good music business trivia. I'll give you a hint, it was the first version of ELO. Jeff Lynn. Crazy man, I forgot his name now. The move, you got it. 
Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, right. Uh, California Man, which is also a Move song. But the lick that Cheap Trick used on there was from the Move song um, Brontosaurus. Because the, the Roy Wood, thank you. I was going to say Ron Wood, and I couldn't get it out of my head. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the original California Man, they did it like a Jerry Lee Lewis send-up. You know, with the boogie-woogie piano. Going to a party. Meet me on after school. Well, <clears throat> there's a jukebox playing. You know, it's a total, like, rockabilly thing. In California, and then Cheap Trick did it, but they used the lick from Brontosaurus. Which is... Yeah, I have a Jerry Jones six string. I'm really wanting to get a Jerry Jones baritone, though. Um, but, uh, yeah, man. Okay, good music trivia for today. Everybody go out and look up The Move. Jeff Lynn and Roy Wood. And, man, they're fun. That's a good band. They also, The Move was the first band to do... <laughs> That was a move song. That was not an ELO song. ELO redid it. But, um... Joe Riggio says, I have a JJ Longhorn. I converted over to a six-string bass. Does that work with that 30-inch scale? The Longhorn's a 28-inch scale. Interesting to try. You have a short horn? Want to sell it? <laughs> Max. Max Moore, you're taking a train from D.C. to K.C., is that what you said? Or Boston to Kansas City? Lots of flood to go through there. I hope that works for you. My old home state of Missouri is underwater right now. I was in fourth position there. Neck position. Third position, middle position. Second position. Missouri Mule, that's right. Doug Guillaume knows what he's talking about. Actually, I'm a Missouri Tiger. I went to Mizzou, grew up in Columbia. So, Mizzou, M I Z. Aha. Uh -huh. Stones at Altamont without the death. That's right, 7591s. They were playing Ampegs there.
friend in Texas, Doug. I probably know him or he's my cousin. I'm not stubborn like a Missouri mule. I'm a pretty reasonable guy. Anyway, Stone Pony, guys. Well, it's about quarter after one. David, I want you to send me some Brunswick stew. Now, I'll stay here all day if you guys want. I just don't want to bore you to death, you know? I want you guys sitting here waiting for something incredible to happen. King. Where did he play, Doug? Where's he from in Missouri? You can overnight it, Dave, in one of those ice um, chests, you know, those frozen dry ice things. I would kill for some Brunswick stew right now. I am so hungry. Some Georgia barbecue. Oh, some pulled pork barbecue with some Brunswick stew or Kansas City Sweet Hickory Barbecue. That's all good, man. These people that argue about barbecue are crazy. That's like arguing over women or something. I only like blonde-haired women that are five foot eight. Are you crazy? Have you looked around? There's so many different good kinds of barbecue in the world. Uh, Southern women. I'm married to a Southern woman. My wife's from Atlanta. I'm married to Georgia Peach. I'm an extremely lucky guy. For you guys in Georgia, you'll know uh, my wife's from Smyrna, outside of Atlanta. That's sort of the Peter Stroud tone right there, isn't it? That's right, don't forget Texas barbecue. Oh man, take me to Ironworks in Austin. Yeehaw, baby. That stuff will set you free. Man, I'm hungry. I'm literally sitting here drooling like a dog talking about barbecue. Well, thank you, Charles. I'm glad you're here from Puerto Rico. We probably ought to start saying goodbye, huh? It's getting kind of. Uh, you want to do another Tupelo? Fonzarelli the third. That's great. Uh, yeah, we can do the Tupelo again. I'm making a bunch this week, so. Dinosaur Barbecue in Syracuse, New York. Yeah, what kind of barbecue is that? What style? style barbecue. What is that? And every time I say New York style barbecue, a phone's going to ring. Are you ready? New York style barbecue. Ready? I'm going to do it again. New York style barbecue. Oh, it didn't work. Hey, it did work. Are you ready? New York style barbecue. Ah. Um, yeah, me too, Steve. Why don't you come over for lunch? Um, George barbecue is the best. George is great. I like Carolina honey mustard style. I like the rub. Memphis rub, Texas rub, Kansas City sweet hickory. Man, my stomach's just going crazy. Next week, you want to do a lunch next week, Steve? Let's do it. I'd love to see you. We need to get caught up. Uh, yeah, we're all sitting here talking about food. It's dinner time for most of you guys, isn't it? So, 
St. Louis style, also very good. I love all that, man. I always think it's funny when people get into arguments over it. It's like, you can like five kinds of barbecue, it's fine. David Hayes, you're going to Atlanta to get a stint. I wish you all the best, man. Everybody here, we also, good vibes, prayers, anything we got for you. It'll go perfectly, don't you worry. Which hospital are you going to in Atlanta? Crawford Long? VA, all right, they'll take great care of you, man. Don't you sweat it, okay? I do, I'll, I'll do it. I know we need to do one. That's just one fucking, oh, I said a cuss word. Excuse me. That is one gnarly little uh yeah steve definitely i want to see you i think about you a lot and i've been so busy i'm meaning to call you that's one of my favorite favorite strat tones right there it's just sort of Five ninety ones, that's right, Steve. I haven't done a Monterey on the broadcast yet. I should, I guess. That's a good point. Yeah, let's do that. Sorry, I was having fun. The pony's fun. Let's, I have a good time playing. Anyway, I think I should probably call it quits. I'm probably wearing you guys out. Unless you guys have any other questions or any subjects you want to talk about. Real quick, before I hang it up, I'll give it a few seconds here. <laughs> sort of Here's why I always miss the lick. Is this it right? Sound all right. It's a uh, Fender, one of those 61 
custom shop things from seven or eight years ago. The only thing I did to it is I put Lawler pickups in it. These pickups are Lawler Dirty Blondes. Uh, right after I said WTF, I said this is one of my favorite Strat tones. Neck pickup through this amp is... up a little bit more even those are noisy single coils you learn some guitar technique watching me <laughs> oh you're nice man that's a very generous thing to say are so generous I'm getting embarrassed um, I just played on the road when I was a kid for a lot and I like playing guitar <clears throat> I had a lot of fun doing it I don't know what's going on in the headphones this Strat sounds just perfect I did graduate from GIT <clears throat> I went there in 1986 uh, 1986 and 1987. The thing about going to GIT in the 80s is everybody was sitting around doing this, you know. I hate that stuff. I hate that stuff. So I learned how to do all that. But you know, since I'm a Southern dude, like you guys will get a kick out of this. So everybody was doing the two-handed stuff, you know. Sitting around going, you know. All that kind of nonsense. And I was like, oh, okay, let me see if I can, I can't remember if I get this right. Listen how loud these pickups are. I don't pop my pickups, as you guys know, so they're louder than daylights. And I have spotlights in here, so it's picking up everything. That's not right. Playing it like a southerner, right? Oh, you want to play two-handed? Sure, I'll do that. But this is a very noisy room. I got three Fresnel lights right here. My whole rig, an amp head sitting out here in the air. These single coils are going to pick up everything. Killer sound, Mr. Fonzarelli says. Well, thank you, man. That's great. You guys are really nice. Thank you. I got to say, I don't want to self-promote. It sure helps to have a good sound and amp. Don't pot pickups. What's in there? Oh, these are um, Lawler Dirty Blondes. Uh, they're a little hotter than normal, but they're not crazy. They're not like Texas hot thing. <laughs> not potting Dub Guillaume ass. Uh, it makes pickup sound dull like this. It does cut back on feedback, but it dulls the pickups uh, for two reasons. One of which is, you know, with the wax all around and the, the magnet and the winding can't interact with 
the strings openly. It only does it through the top instead of on the sides as well. Um, but also soaking your electrical device in hot wax, <laughs> as you can imagine, might not be the best thing to do for it. It's just a personal preference. I'm not saying it's better or worse. It's just what I like. You know, I'm from an era where I played loud amps, and I'm just used to doing this. You know. No, no, it doesn't bother me to turn the volume down if it's the amp starts to squeal. Yeah, please take my opinions with a grain of salt, you know? I, uh, I have a lot of strong opinions, but they're just for me. You know, they're not, uh, they're not law. You know, if you like something a certain way, it's good. And don't let any other jerk tell you otherwise, you know. Um, there's a lot of people, especially on internets and certain forums that I won't mention names, that just pontificate the most astonishing amount of... You guys mind if I cuss? Anyone raise your hand. If I say a cuss word, will you be offended? I'm giving you 10 seconds to sound off on the on the uh, chat room. Okay. Forums are full of guys that are full of shit. Um, there's a lot of intelligent guys on the forum, but there's a lot of guys on there that just sit behind a keyboard and they just barf out something they've read on another forum. And don't let anyone ever tell you that your opinion is wrong, okay? I'm telling you that now. Your opinion is right. If you don't like my guitar, it's okay. If you don't like the 65 amps, it's okay. Your opinion is what matters. Don't buy something because a bunch of other guys on a forum are buying it. If it makes you happy, it's a good piece of gear. Okay? I am absolving you of all guilt. If any a-hole tells you, well, if you have to do this and you got to do that and you got to use this cord and this tube and I have a $450 power cord, they're full of shit. You know why? Hendrix played off-the-shelf Marshalls, <clears throat> off-the-shelf Strats with the cheapest curly cords he can find, and damn, it sounded good. You know, it's like there's no, there's no right or wrong, okay? Uh, I don't mean to get a little animated, but uh, that thing drives me nuts. You know, and all the forums, there's good guys and bad guys. The forums aren't bad in themselves. The forums are great. But there are people on there, either A, they work for an amp company or a guitar company, so they go around and pose like they're a user trying to tell you you need to buy something else. Or they're just jerks, you know, like their wife beats them up or something, or they're, they're the low man on the totem pole at work, but when they get on their keyboard, all of a sudden they're a big man. And uh, I'll tell you my opinion. I'll give you my opinion for free, and you should just take it. Uh, take it as an opinion. That's it, man. It's just an opinion. I have a different set of experiences than some people do. It doesn't make my opinion any better than anyone else's. It just makes it different. Your opinion, it, man, you pick up a guitar and plug it into an amp and it makes you happy. God bless you. There is nothing wrong with that. You know, it's all fine. I'm telling you guys what I like. And I want you to take it with a grain of salt. I want you to just uh, listen to it, filter it through your own ears and your own opinions, and come to your own conclusions. Uh, you want to ask my opinion about something, I'll tell you. I'm not shy about it, obviously. But um, I think it's okay. So that's my word for the day. Remember the word from Unity when we were kids in the 70s? Today's word from Unity, right before the television went off the air. For those of you that are over or under 40... You probably don't remember when television ended at night. It used to go off at midnight. Any recommendations for a good message board? No, they're all good. You just got to filter the people. That's it. You know, I'm on, I'm on the gear page. I don't post there really, but um, I like gear sluts. Gear sluts is great. Um, the guys seem to be all pros. You know, like they're not because the gear page is full of salespeople. Um, but if you know that, it's no big deal. I know that because I know who they are. Um, 
And they pretend like they're just some average. I just bought a so-and-so guitar, and it's the best guitar I've ever had in my life, and I really think you ought to get them. Yeah, Z-Talk is good. Um, like I said, I like gear sluts. The gear page is great. You just got to filter. Um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Harmony Central is okay. Uh, our forum is up. We're going to start using it, but I don't have anyone to moderate it yet. I think Charles in Puerto Rico said he might do it. Yeah, that's good, Scott there, Scott 1963. That's it, it's just opinions, but I really, really, it's one of my pet peeves, because I get annoyed, I, I'll lock onto the certain forums, and there's pages and pages and pages of arguments over, I'm also on the Ant Builders forum, but um, there's pages and pages of arguments over subjective opinions. You know, well, I know for a fact a 71 Marshall's better than a 70, and if you disagree with me, you're an idiot. Really? You're an idiot for saying that. You know, a 64 Strat's always better than a 63. Always. And anybody who's been around knows that. Oh, come on. You're full of shit, man. That's just crazy. You know? It's just... Uh, 18Watt.com. I don't know if it's still up. I think it is. It comes and goes. 18Watt used to be really good, and then it turned into an argument for him. And uh, people were suing, and yeah, it was just crazy. So it comes and goes. I think it's still, yeah, better doesn't matter. It's just an opinion. I like this strat. You guys may not. Yeah, Steve, you were on the 18 watt forum, weren't you? So was I. I loved it. When Gabby, Gabby Bukatu Taru, with the Romanian name I always mispronounce, was managing the board, it was great. You know, Richie and all those guys, Zafod Phil. <laughs> There was a good bunch of guys, and none of them had egos, you know. We'd argue over, like, a carbon comp resistor or a metal film resistor or something, but it wasn't, like, jerks, you know, like, rude, rude people. And, um, and you know, and there were guys, you know, that would, I'd see in person, like, I knew who they were, and then they'd go, uh, um, they'd go on the forums and write, pages of, oh, the dulcet overtones and the blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, dude, I was there. You can't even play guitar. <laughs> you know, they just want to be an expert because the rest of their life is incomplete, I guess. I don't know. So having said that, um, there's a lot of great people on the forums. I'm just making jokes. Don't take it personally. Um, but you recognize those guys. You know, you say, hey, does anyone like um, TC Electronics Polytuner? And then some guy will write six paragraphs about what an idiot you are and why you should buy a Peterson strobe tuner because he works for Peterson. Um, and he makes money if you buy their products. Yeah, huge racks. Yeah, man, it's just... Anyway, that's my point. My word for the day, Dan's opinion forum. We can sit around and talk about opinions later, but all my thing is your opinion is good. Your opinion is valid, and your opinion is the most important. Believe in your own opinion, okay? So there you have it. I'm going to go off and coach Little League Baseball. <laughs> okay, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Is there anything you want me to talk about before we quit? Anything in particular? I'll give it a few seconds here to, uh, for everybody to chime in. If not, I had a fantastic time with you guys today. And really glad we did this. We're almost at an hour in life coach Dan Bull. Yeah, right. Um, well, the forum's up there. If you go to 65 amps slash forum, there's nothing done to it at all. It's just like bare bones primitive. You can log on and sign up, and then we'll get rolling. Um, I'm, all, uh, I'm also going to be doing a blog for Guitar World, which you guys should check out pretty soon. Um, so I'll be writing my opinions and pontifications um, in a magazine as well. Um, thank you, Mr. Fonzarelli III, G. Fonzarelli. Uh, oh, Goofy65, thank you, man. I enjoyed that you're here. Thank you. And... W. Lawrence Stevens, thank you for coming on. And lunch next week, let's do it definitely. 
and uh, Tony Daniel and Justin Magana and a bunch of good friends on here. Thank you guys. And Joe Riggio, always nice to see you. And uh, Charles in Puerto Rico, Charles Rivera. Gosh, we got all kinds of good friends here. Baseface Josh, I don't know your real name, but I like your handle. Doug Guillaume, who's a customer and a friend. Very good. Max Marr, who's in an airport, watching us on an iPhone or something. And uh, how about a stereo rig next week? Thank you, Steve. Uh, sorry I missed a day. Oh, you know what, Paul? I'm going to put the recording up, so don't worry. Uh, you know, this is a mono broadcast. So there's a stereo version of the software that I can use, but it soaks up the Internet completely. And I have a rocking Internet here, but maybe we'll try it off Wednesday just to see what works. I'd love to run stereo. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off now, and I'm going to post this on Facebook in a few minutes. You'll see it on my Facebook page, <clears throat> the 65 Amps Facebook page, and Twitter. It'll show up there. Uh, thank you, Gearaholic86. I appreciate it. Um, I had a good time today. And uh, please feel to write me with any questions you want to have on the broadcast or anything you want to talk about. I'm all for it. And uh, we will talk soon, guys. So once again, it's May 4th, 2011. And I'm hiccuping on the broadcast again. It's crazy. Um, anyway, yes, I'll see you next week, which will be, what, the 11th, May 11th. And uh, I might have a special guest next week. Um, I think Larry Dennison's going to come over, who is the music manager on The Tonight Show, um, just over here in Burbank. And uh, I talked to him last night, and he might come and do that. Also, Ward Hake might come and visit us from his music coordinator for all the Fox television shows. Um, so he does all the music for, uh, he manages the music for uh, Sons of Anarchy, Glee, Modern Family, and a few others that you probably all know. And these guys can tell you a lot of behind-the-scenes interesting stuff. So anyway, once again, thank you guys very, very much. It's been a real pleasure. I'll see you next week.